Hey folks, it's Rith Guy here. How you doing? Welcome back to Dutch Polder. The Shubit Harvesters are busy harvesting in field. I've got a full load and it's done that very weird thing that it does with the trailers when you exit the game and then you come back in again. Um, on this trailer, it's, it's kind of made it all pointy and weird on the top. We're not quite sure why, but anyway. Um, the, yeah, so we're carrying on with the sugar bee harvest today, and I'm also hoping to go and buy our pigs, which are not Dutch. Not Dutch pigs, not Dutch bacon, nothing to do with Denmark whatsoever. We're, 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 very, we're, 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 um, we're very much in the Netherlands here. Zealand. We are in Zealand in the Netherlands, in southwest Netherlands. There's nothing whatsoever to do with Denmark. Um, my question for this week is, where do you want to go for our next four-week stint? And if my calculations are correct, it will most likely be our final four-week stint that we do. So we're on week two right now. We've got two more weeks after that on this map. And then where do you want to go next? Do you want to stay here for another four weeks and make an eight-week stay on this map? Or would you like to finish up FS17 on Shamrock Valley, based in Ireland, Lone Oak Farm, based in the States... Dallin Farm, Yorkshire, up in the north of the UK, or the Tyrolean Alps. Now, a little bit about those other maps. Shamrock Valley is a sort of small, medium-sized map, I think. Um, that's, that's how it's sort of class it, I guess. Um, small to medium size. And that's based in Ireland, and um, it looks really... It, Right, I, I say it looks good. Uh, they all look good, right? They all look fantastic. They are all well made. They're all brilliant maps. Okay, so I, I don't need to keep saying that bit. Uh, Lone Oak Farm is a big scale farm. That one is in, I think it's Ontario in the US. Dowland Farm is, well, I did the a time lapse series on Dowland Farm in the north of the UK. Um, I won't be going back to that save game because that save game is actually on a different version of the map. I will be starting fresh, and I don't know what we would do if we went up there. Um, we'd have to, you know, play it by ear. And then the Tyrolean Alps, that is another small farm, but that is a small farm with a difference. There's very, very, very steep ground up there, and quite frankly, it does look absolutely stunning. Um, it's very realistic, steep ground. Um, it, it really does look amazing. I was very impressed with what i seen from that map. Um, out of all of them... I don't like to say which is my favourite because I feel it influences the vote a bit much. But um, I think you can guess which one my favourite is out of the five options. Uh, which one I'd like to finish up with. In part, okay, I am going to influence it. I'm going to say um, I would prefer to go to the Tyrolean Alps. In part because the very last map that I did on FS15 before FS17 came out was one called Higher Hills. Which had also some quite steep fields in it and it just sort of feels like it could be quite cool to do another um, map where I'm going on to a steep field um, or going on to a map that's got a load of steep fields on it to finish up the series considering that's what I did two years ago when um, the uh, FS15 when we finished that one up and I just thought that would actually be quite a cool little thing to do um, Purely because of that. No other reason, just because that's what I did at the end of that game. And I, I thought that might actually be quite a cool thing to do. Um, there is no other real reason. I think all the maps are great. I am driving on the Sugar Beet at the end of this, purely because I don't want the vehicles to get confused. So if I drive over them and delete this little bit of Sugar Beet all the way along here, um, we're not going to have any issues. And yes, I realise that's not entirely the most realistic thing to do, to drive along the sugar beet and destroy it. Uh, but quite frankly, I don't really mind. Now, what I'd like to do today... Oh, so anyway, those, those are your five maps. You're choosing one which is pretty much going to... Well, it is. It's going to be the last map that we play in FS17. Uh, or the last one that we do with choices. I do have, obviously, my Pacific Inlet logging one. That one's going to run until the end of FS17. Um, but this is the last map you've got with choices on it. And, yeah, where, where do you want to go? So it's your vote. It's your game. Head into the comment section down below. Let us know which one you want and why. And, of course, don't forget to actually cast your vote in the top right-hand corner. Now, let's go and grab this little bit of sugar beet that's in this trailer here, in this vehicle here. 
And we'll run down the other end and we'll grab sugar beet from down there as well. And we'll do another tip over in our store. And then we want to get our pigs. Now, there aren't as many um, pig farmers in Denmark as... A Den Not Denmark! What is with me this week? This, this, this couple of weeks, I, I don't know. My brain feels a bit fried. I'm not really sure what's going on, but I do apologize. Not Denmark. In the Netherlands. It's not very common to see pig farmers in the Netherlands, but there are still, you know, several of them around. So it's not unrealistic that we're doing pigs. We're just doing something slightly different to what most of this guy's neighbours would be doing. So we're going to be getting some pigs, and we're going to be starting up our Dutch bacon um, producing facilities. And I'd like to do that once I've gotten... I'll grab the sugar beet off of the... Uh, harvester right now and then we will see about getting started with whoa easy tiger easy now i got a big long line of stuff there i actually want to race up so i am going to go across this um i wanted to get up here before this one got to the end of the row so that i could just quickly offload him um i'm thinking we will use this one once he gets to the other end and we'll tidy up the other end you go forward a bit. There. What are you, what, why are you stopping? I don't really understand. Is it to do with the height of the tip? It might be. I, I think maybe the the, um, the point where it tips into the trailer is a fraction too low in places. So it sort of it drops below the actual tip trigger in the trailer, and that's why it's been a little bit odd. At least that would be my guess. Anyway, I'll take this one over here, and while he turns round, he'll go back up to the other end. Um, see, we've sort of deleted quite a lot, and we're driving on our neighbour's field right now. We shouldn't be doing that, regardless of how rude he's been to us in the past. Um, I, it might be a good idea if I do a couple of passes up and down the end of the field. I'm not quite sure why it's turning the way it is there. I would have thought that it wouldn't be doing that, and it would sort of go right up to the end of the field. It might be... And because of the road, it might be reading the road and deciding that it's going to turn in front of it rather than going out over it. And you really don't know sometimes with this game. It, it does some very peculiar things. So let's just bring that one over there. And while you start tipping, I'm going... Ooh. We need to get going with this one. That one we can actually get started with now. We must forget to do that. Right, let's um, stop you a minute. I have just driven on to the crop again. Right, that, that seems to happen a lot with me at the moment, but um, yeah, we'll, we'll ignore that. We'll also ignore the fact that I'm about to drive over on the neighbour's field again. Just, I'm, I'm, I'm asking you to ignore an awful lot of things on this one, mainly because I don't want to be messing around with sugar beet harvest for too many episodes, because there are plenty of other things that we also want to do. I will go and get the planting started in that other field. Now, because we've got a direct drill, we shouldn't have any problems with that. It should just go straight through, start planting, and not cause us any problems. Um, I will do once around the field, and I'm hoping then that the AI vehicle extension will be able to take itself around the field a couple of turns. And if it can do that, then that would be absolutely brilliant because we then, we're not going to have any more problems with it. We can let it do that a couple times and then I can go back to it and I can switch it over to the standard hired help, which usually performs a little bit better than the AI vehicle extension um, when you're trying to go around various different fields. I just pressed H then instead of B to, or V to lift the thing up, which is why it came up with helper B is finished. Um, helper B hasn't finished at all. Helper B didn't actually really do anything useful whatsoever on that particular run. So run down here. I'll do one more pass back up across as well. And then that should eliminate the, like, the leaving any kind of strip of crop on the end here. I was just looking for a post-it note where um, a viewer by the name of Udo Mega has sent me, or well, he, he sent a challenge for me to pronounce the German uh, pronunciation of the, um, the the biogas plant. It's, it's a big, long, com complex sounding word, and he did at least sort of spell it out phonetically for me, and 
I had it written down on a post-it note so that I could look at it and I could actually try pronouncing it for you in one of the episodes. And I did not do this and I now feel that I've let people down. Um, and I, I, I got it wrote on, on, on this post-it note so that I could say it to you in this episode. That, that was the plan. And I cannot find this post-it note anywhere. I've got a feeling I may have thrown it away because I, I did just sort of siphon through a load of post-it notes and chuck a load. Um, and i got a feeling that, um, yeah, it, it's been chucked. So we may have to come back to the Pacific Inlet logging map. And um, I, I'll try and say it on that one. But, uh, yeah. So Udo Mega, if you're watching this video, could you please spell that word out phonetically in the comment section again so that I can recopy it down? Because I can't remember what the other video was that you did. And I... I've also tried looking back through comments, but I can't remember which video it was that you posted it on. Uh, it was quite some time ago now. But, and, um, so, yeah, I, I will try and do that, but uh, it, it's another one of those things that is on my to-do list that I haven't quite gotten to yet. Now, you are up to 77%. You are tipped, and you're done. So if I take this one, and we go racing back down the field here... And we need to start getting this tipped out. So, well, actually, the one here is at 70%. He's probably not going to do another full pass on the field. And then we want to go all the way up to the other end. Now, I've got... I can't switch crop destruction off because I've got uh, seasons. And seasons has the crop destruction bit built into it. So, we don't have the option for turning crop destruction off anymore. Um just to like speed it up so that I can cut across the crops or something like that. that that's not an option for us we cannot do that so we've just got to see if we can race around here in time to be able to unload that sugar beet harvester before he's actually got to stop and wait no 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 we're a bit slidey this this trailer is a little bit heavy for this tractor as you go round the corners it it does try to lift the rear wheels ever so slightly and that does cause us the odd little bit of a traction issue, which is not great. Um, I'm also thinking that I shouldn't have had the um, the ground, you know, the, the realistic, it was supposed to be realistic, this, uh, what is it? Ground response. Ground response going while you've got likes of the sugar beet harvesters running, it isn't very realistic at all it's very very bouncy and you can see that the way that the the harvesters um leap up and down like some sort of crazed gazelle as they go across the field it yeah the, the ground response is really good for some machines but it's not very good for um sugar beet harvesters and some of the larger combines i have noticed so we're not going to be doing anything with that at the moment the other sugar beet harvester down there is currently at 91%. That's about to turn round. So then it's going to stick the chute in the field. And we're not going to be able to get anything from it. Now, can I get round this corner without jackknifing and flipping the tractor around? I can. That one up there is going to be unhelpful. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to come up to about this point. And then we're going to flick over to that one a minute. Let that one start. So we go through our machinery a second and we go to here. And as soon as this one reaches 100%, we'll then take control and move out of the sugar beet. At least that's the plan. And we'll go and unload into the trailer there. And then once we've done that, we're then going to be... Well, we're going to start planting. I think we'll get the planting started next and then we can see about getting the pigs. We need to get the pigs up. I did originally say that I wanted to do like a, a couple loads with the you know, of unloading the pigs. I wanted to do a couple loads with the tractor and towing a animal trailer. I'm starting to think that maybe we shouldn't worry about that because it's going to be quite time consuming and I need the tractor here. I'm using this tractor. If I lift that one up a bit, it'd probably work a bit better. Right. Yeah, see if I lift it up like that a bit. We'll bring that one back over to there. Get you unloaded into there. We're not going to take all of what's available in this one. Actually, I think that's now full. This one has got 
Still on 60%, this one is. I'll turn off the flashing beacons a minute. And we'll bring this one back over to here. About to that point there. And press H. This one is doing fine. Okay. Now we'll take this one here. A massive, great, big fence tractor with the double wheels on it. These double wheels are doing us good. Now, I really shouldn't be driving... I'm, just pretend I'm not driving on his field. I'm only doing this to try and sort of speed things along a little bit. But we are getting a nice lot of sugar beet. We're going to have to see about selling some of this stuff. Because I don't think we're going to fit this entire harvest into that storage facility over there. I can't remember exactly how big it is. But I don't think there's enough room in one of those for all of the sugar beet that we're going to have coming off this field. I'm, I'm bringing in 56,000 litres at a time. And... I really don't remember how much is in there. I think it does tell us on here. Yes, it does. It does actually count there. Um, and then we're going to have to see about taking it off and selling it. We'll worry about that later. Right, let's switch over to you. Barley, we wanted. Barley in field one was our first job, wasn't it? Uh, yes, because that was wheat. So we do barley in field one. We'll bring you out here. You're ready to roll. We'll start. Actually, we'll start in that corner over there. Because that's quite a steep corner to get round. And we will do, like I said, we'll do this manually for the first time just once round the field. And then I'm hoping that we'll be able to have some hired help take over and do some of it for us. So let's lower that and start it. Bring that through. We've already got a nearly full grain tank on one of those harvesters. I'm going to just let that one go and ignore it until we've done this. Because we, we need to get this job underway as well. As well as going and buying pigs. And we've got so much stuff that we need to do. So much time. Well, no, no, not so much time. So, so so many things to do and so little time to do it in. We need, you know, we've got all this autumn planting. We've got the autumn harvest of sugar beet. We need to buy in our pigs. Uh, although it's mid-autumn at the moment, the second day of autumn. And the pigs would be cheaper tomorrow. So maybe... I did say this yesterday, I think. In, well, in yesterday's episode. It was several days ago that I recorded it now. Um, I'm, I'm thinking maybe we should just leave buying the pigs until tomorrow when they're at their absolute cheapest for the year. They won't have time to produce more pigs. Uh, at least not at the moment. Uh, we've got to wait. It's spring and autumn that they have litters of pigs. But in the winter, they don't do anything. So, you know, all we've got to do is just keep them alive through the winter. They don't produce. They don't give us more pigs. And therefore, we don't get anything from them. And obviously, you've got to have the pigs reproduce in order to be able to sell them and get the piglets from them and sell on the pork. I'm thinking 200 pigs. I think if we run 200 pigs and then at the time of the year when pigs are going for the most. So let's just have a look in here and quickly take a look at pigs, which does appear to be the third day of spring. So we will buy 200 pigs down here. And then we've got spring um, breeding. So we'll get a few extra pigs in the spring. And then we will sell any pigs that we have on the third day of spring. Which should give us the best profit for pigs. At least that's what I'm hoping. And then we will go back and it should be able to happen. It should be able to do it so that they'll... Um, They'll then breed for a whole year, and on that sort of time of year each year, we can then sell off all of the pigs that we've got. I realise that that's not how an actual pig farm would run. You know, an actual pig farm, they tend to... They have loads of pigs going out just about every week. I don't know if it is... Well, I'm a, I would assume so. I've never actually worked on a pig farm. I have. Uh, a, a friend of mine from many years ago, he used to run pig farms. I don't know if he still does, actually. I, I have not really been in contact with him for several years, but um, he used to run pig farms. He was very much into his pigs, and different depending on the size of the pig farm, they certainly used to take pigs out on a fairly regular basis. I don't remember if it was every week, he said, or if it was every other week, um, but, you know, they would breed all through the year, and it would just make life easier um to have them like that and i don't think because you know with beef animals and with sheep sheep you very much you tend to have them all lamb at the same time and beef you tend to do that dairy herds are very much split as to whether they 
have their cows calving all year round and producing milk all year round or if they batch calve i my um well i know a farmer that lives nearby who does batch calving uh, not batch he, he does everything calves all at the same time all the cows they calve all at the same time they all calve in the spring and then they start producing milk and he milks them through the spring and all through the summer and then they uh, dry up and he stops milking I think he stops milking about two three weeks before Christmas and then for a month he, or a month six weeks he's not milking at all it might be a little bit longer I think it's only a month or six weeks uh, and then he starts up milking again because he doesn't want to be having milking cows right through the darkest parts of the winter it saves him money on feed and so on you get um he said that you get like the poorest quality milk in the winter as well but i, I don't know about that because with like feed supplements and stuff these days i, I don't know how much that is uh, um entirely true but you you've obviously if you're giving a load of extra feed supplements in the winter it's going to cost you more isn't it so he tends to he, he calves in the spring and then milks all through spring summer and autumn and then dries the cows off and stops milking for the winter and it works really well for him that system and i know plenty of beef farmers who calve each year in the spring um and then there's just as many beef farmers who calve all year round just uh, like they, they split them up into groups and so their animals are producing calves the whole year round and then they're sending calves out the whole year round um and the same with dairy farms you have a lot of dairy farms that calve they they kind of stagger them so that the cows are in groups and they calve all year round so you've got milking all year, all year round 24 well, i was going to say 24 7 but you're not milking 24 7 you're, you're producing 365 days of the year no matter what um so there's i'm assuming that pigs are the same i mean pigs can produce more litters of piglets than cows and sheep can produce offspring um pigs are able to produce i but i don't know how many so as i'm woefully sort of ignorant about pigs and what they do and so on anybody who's got experience with pig farming one how often does a sow produce a litter now i thought that it was one litter uh well, i don't remember the exact gestation period but i thought that it was three litters of piglets per two years for a sow or something along those lines is that right? Is that accurate or is that um, completely inaccurate? I'd very much like to know. And also, is it normal for like you, all the pigs to be giving birth at roughly the same time? Or is it sort of carefully staggered so that you've got a constant supply of young animals coming through? It's, it, you know, it, is there like an either or or is it very much a um you split it so you, you split it all up so that you've got a continuous supply of piglets being produced all year round and that's really the only way that you would run a pig farm um i don't know so this is why i'm asking you anybody that does know please get in the comment section fill me in correct me educate me dispel my ignorance i'd be very pleased about that i'd very much like to know right let's back you up here why is that roper tiger there it's 78 percent, but why is it telling me that it's finished I've only just noticed that. I've only just noticed that it's telling me that it's finished. Now, control H. We have got the AI vehicle extension there. And I'm going to increase the turn angle here because I believe that does help. The rest of it, I have no idea. So I'm just going to leave it like that. And I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to do that. Let's see if it will start working. I don't know if it's going to like this or not seems all right it's got a line to follow now because it's got a line to follow i think it's going to be all right and also the cultivating thing um i think it's going to be all right with that as well it seems to be okay so far i am buying in seed remember i've got workers buying seed rather than us having to take them to the seed drills just because i think that's a little bit easier for us and that seems to be going all right at the moment so we'll let that one carry on We'll leave that one uninterrupted for just a minute. And you are completely full. But why have you... I reckon it may have done it because it's close to the edge of the field. So I think what we want to do with this one is we want to do a pass down the side of the field. And then 
well, I suppose we could always do a pass back again, but I don't know if we need to do one back again. We just want to do a pass down the side of the field so that, yes, that's what it is. Look, even in places on here, it, the, um, the sugar beet wasn't going into the... See, the sugar beet's not going into the tank. It's, um... It's not harvesting it. It's saying that we don't... It's, it's because we don't own the field. If I go down the other end of the field, turn round and drive back up again, we might be able to have that all right. And you see what I mean by the ground response thing? I know I do sometimes turn this off in the series. And I think I did in the Estancia Lapacho one, because look at it. It's, it's not supposed to bounce around that much with a sugar beet harvester, right? A sugar beet harvester is a really, really big machine. It's absolutely enormous. And it shouldn't be bouncing around like this. This is, this is just, this is highly unorthodox. It really is. Now, is it going to let me? Nope, it's not gonna let me go this way either. It's going to leave little bits all the way up across the field. So I'm going to cut what I can in a line up across here. But it doesn't look like it's going to go well for us. Sort of going. So I keep it back from the edge a bit. Maybe if I sort of drive over here a little bit and keep it back from the edge. Try and keep a sugar beet or two away from the edge of the field. It might work a bit better. It's sort of doing it. Sort of. I mean, we're at 95% full. I get the feeling that we're not going to be able to get all the way down to the end of the field before it fills the tank up entirely anyway. And, yeah, 99. And there we have it, full. So we can't even, like, finish this one off. But what we'll do is if I go up here, I'm going to drive right down to the other end of the field and I'm going to just, like, set the hired help going. And it will it'll put the spout out and then it will wait for the crop. At least it should. It'll wait for the crop, wait for the tractor. It'll wait, it'll just sit there and wait for the tractor to come along and take the rest of it. Now we've done, has she done a really big chunk of this field now? I'm quite impressed by how much we have managed to cover so far. So we'll whiz this one around here and bring you in there. I was thinking about getting a third harvester going, but I, I really don't think we need to. Right, see that one will go there and that will just drop that one out. So then we can get a trailer here. Yeah, a third harvester. I don't think that is going to help the situation because I can barely keep up with these two harvesters with this tractor. Um, so I can barely keep up with two harvesters. I don't think I would have any kind of hope whatsoever of keeping up with three. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here and I'm going to take the sugar beet that is in this one and I'm going to bring you in right I'll take the sugar beet that's in this one and then I'm going to go and empty this one out then I'm going to get the sugar beet from the one up the other end and then I'm going to swing back round and hopefully top it up from this one and then we can be away again it's surprising you there is a massive capacity on these roper things absolutely enormous capacity but I mean look at that there we've got a huge number of sugar beet there it does look pretty impressive with these things in the field, doesn't it? It does look very impressive. Right. Now we'll go whizzing off up here. I got 43,000 litres of sugar beet in this trailer. And I'm going to go up. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm not going up. I'm going back this way to go and empty it. Then we're going to go up to the one at the other end. Get another 43,000 litres. And then we're going to come back down here to take a little bit off of the one down here. I think this one only has a capacity of 300,000 litres. It says only. Like, that's not very much. 300,000 litres. That is a huge quantity of sugar beet. Uh, yes, it is. It's 300,000 that we can put in one of those. And we are currently sitting on 200,000 litres. We have got no hope of getting all of the sugar beets straight in here. So what I'm thinking is... We'll put what we can in here. We have a sale point. The crop depot, sawmill depot is 244 euros. 
but that's not actually that far away from us. They got the sawmill one is just down there, so I could take. Is that a road there? Is that a road at the top end there? I could maybe get a little bit off of this one, get, you know, almost 10,000, come up here, get some from there, come down around there into the sawmill, tip and sell in the sawmill, and then come back round. And we can also sell a little bit direct in there. We're not going to make very much money by selling direct. We really aren't. I know that. I'm very well aware that we're not going to be making very much in the way of money at all by just going there and selling direct to any of the um, places that we can sell to. See, why is it turning in the field like that instead of coming out and turning further out? I, I don't really understand what this one is doing. It's, 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 being, it's behaving in a very peculiar fashion. We need about 10,000 litres of sugar beet from this anyway, so we'll, we'll grab that now. If I bring this one in over here like this... That's going to start. There we go. Out comes the spout. We can travel up alongside this one and just take some sugar beet there. Like that. Go up alongside here. And once we've... There, that's, that's about 10,000. Excellent. We can go whizzing away now and we'll go up to the other one that's going to pretty much... Em well, it's not... Yeah, not quite. Pretty much empty out the other one. And then that one can start harvesting up and down the field again as well. And we will take this load down to the sawmill and we'll sell that direct down there. And then we may do another load at the sawmill. I'm thinking we'll probably do a load back at the pigs. But we're sort of reaching the point now where I'm actually seriously considering just leaving the rest of the sugar beet. Because we've got more sugar beet than we could possibly use. And I just, you know... It's a lot of work to actually finish doing all of the sugar beet harvest. And it's not going to be very entertaining viewing. So we might just end up leaving it. We might just sort of abandon this little project. <laughs> just leave it in the field. It give you an idea. It does give you an idea of this map though. Because I took one of the medium sized fields. Compared to sort of all of it. You know we got like field 45 here is absolutely enormous. And we got all of these strip fields here. A lot of them are similar sizes. They're absolutely huge, these fields. Why is that going up and down there? I didn't set it on that, did I? Not F. I said F. Uh, oh, I did. I set it to go up and down. I didn't actually mean to do that. I'm thinking I might just leave it. I think I will just leave it as it is. It's, it's moving up and down. It's doing its job. I didn't realise I'd told it to move up and down the field like that. But if it's doing it, it's doing it. And it is doing the whole field properly without any problems. So as long as you've got a direct drill, you can go straight in on you know some of the soil textures, even when they seem a little bit weird. Um, it, it seems to be doing the job just fine. Right, you're away. And you right here, 96. It didn't fill it up. And there is a road there. We got a track into the corner of our field. So we will use that track right there. We will assume that we have a right of way on this track down here so that we can go out the corner of our field and head on down towards the sawmill. So we want to come down here. Now, where is the... Is that, that is the sawmill right there, isn't it? No, it's not. That's the sawmill over there. So we need to come down to the road. Out onto the road. So what is... Oh, that's the... I see. That's the straw sail point. Okay. But that's actually pretty good, that is, having a straw cell point over here somewhere. Um, I like that it's not next. I didn't realise that it was there. Um, I like that it's not on the actual farm. So many maps you have, and like giants themselves, you sell into your own barn. And that bit, I've never really been entirely happy with the fact that you got to sell into your own barn. Because it makes no sense to me. You don't sell into your own barn. You, you, you bring... You, you, you just don't. And I probably should have gone across the Waybridge. If you bring in stuff in to sell in a place like this, you would have gone across the Waybridge. So we'll have to do that. If we come back down here again with another load, we'll have to make sure that we go into the Waybridge. Let's bring you up on the A. You see what I mean by the, the, the weight of this truck? <laughs> ah, look at that. Okay, that is a very... What? I'm at the right place. Crop depot. 
Sawmill Depot. Sawmill and Dep. Oh. Ah. <laughs> it doesn't like it. Right. Uh, no. It's over this side. My bad. My bad. Yeah, you wouldn't be dumping this stuff down through a grill, would you? So we will bring this one round. We go like that. And we'll back this one up. And then we'll sell it in there. We can sell our very first load of sugar beet. And that really is about all I've got time for for this episode. We will carry this on in our next episode tomorrow. And I'm not going to do very much more sugar beet. I'm going to probably let those sugar beet harvesters run to a bit of a halt. I'll grab another load off of them and we'll put in for the pigs. And it's probably going to be about it. I don't really want to do too much more. It's just going to get too boring to watch. You're not going to be interested in it. So we just assume that we've cleared that field. Part of the reason that we do these series is, you know, that I'm doing this whole, you're jumping from one map to the other all the time, is because, ooh, okay, I hit the roof there, is purely because I'm doing it to showcase maps. And spending hours and hours and hours just working on a sugar beet harvest is not showcasing a map. We've sort of seen what there is to offer. So what I think we'll do in our next episode is we will empty out the sugar beet harvesters with another load and I will store the rest of the sugar beet that I get from them. And that will probably fill up our sugar beet storage completely. And then from that point, you know, we, we can always go and sell a little bit of sugar beet if we get a great demand somewhere. We've got it there available to use for the pigs. And then we can quickly fast forward a day and we can start buying the pigs in and make some, a, a bit more progress. I don't think it matters if we, you know, the planting over there, I've got the, the, um, the barley being planted. I don't think it matters too much if we don't get the barley planted fully on time. Right, that one's just turning down there. So I really, I'm going to have to go down to the other end of the field and we'll deal with the other one first. Um... The barley can be planted now in the autumn, and we'll do planting of the um, the wheat in the other field. We'll do that in the spring. That will be a, a spring planting job, I should think, and that will work out quite nicely. But anyway, where do you want me to go? My weekly question, or my monthly question, where do you want me to go for our next four-week stint? And it is going to be our final four-week stint on an FS17 map. So do you want to stay here and make it eight weeks here on this map? Or would you rather move on? We can go to Lone Oak Farm, which is a big farm based in the States. We can go to the um, hang on, Shamrock Valley, which is a smaller farm based in Ireland. We can go to Dowland Farm, which is a medium to big sized ish farm in Yorkshire in uh, northern England and that's the one that I did time lapse on previously as I've said at the beginning of this episode and yesterday as well I am not using the save game file from my um, time lapse series because that was a different map the map makers were busy doing a massive update and they gave me a copy of the map that was done part way through so it was released only to me. That is not compatible with any other version of the map apart from my own. And I am not releasing a... Um, yeah, this is not... I'm not releasing a version of a map that was given exclusively to me to use. Um, because they didn't publish it. It's, it's up to the makers of the map to publish. So, um, yeah. I, I get asked to do this fairly regularly. No, it's not happening. That's why. It's not mine to give away. And if you want it given away, you need to speak to the people that made the map. And they've already released a version. I very much doubt they'll want to release a um, different version. So, um, yeah. If we do Dallin Farm, it would be partway through. And then there is my favourite option, the Tyrolean Alps, which is a small farm based in the Western Austrian Alps. And... It's very, very steep. Very steep fields. Everything about it is steep. It's very small farm and very steep. Did I mention that it's steep? It's very steep land. And one of the reasons, like I said at the beginning of this episode, that I particularly like this one is because one of the last series that I did in FS15, 
um, was higher hills and that one was kind of in a bowl shaped valley and some of those fields were quite steep as well nothing like this one but it does have a similar kind of feel from the the pictures and stuff like that which is what i quite like about it so that's uh one of the reasons that it is a favorite of mine and also just because i think it looks absolutely gorgeous and i've not really played a map like that before um but that i'm trying to influence you or anything i already said that i wasn't going to try to influence you and you all know that if I say that I'm not going to do something, well, of course, I'm not going to do it. Unless I change my mind 12 seconds later. Um, yeah. At least I am consistent in my inconsistencies. How's that? I give you that. Um, <laughs> anyway, if you've enjoyed this episode, then please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye and see you later.